for joining me for another episode of Simply Susan, where we explore historical sewing, cooking, and living. Today, we are going to be working on another sewing project. Um, the project that we're working on is the pattern from Truly Victorian. In case you can't tell, I have become very partial to these patterns. I like that they are drafted from actual historical patterns. I don't believe that I am skilled enough to draft my own patterns at this point in my life, maybe someday, but I like that I still believe that they are pretty historically accurate or inspired and they are pretty user friendly and it's a pattern company that is a little bit more specialized to the historical patterns. Um, although some of the, the larger manufacturers, the McCall's, Simplicity, etc., do have some historical patterns and costume focused patterns, um, these I just find to be a little bit more accurate and, and better for, for what I'm trying to do. So we will take a look at this pattern and we're gonna get started working on this petticoat. Um, I believe it's going to be fairly simple. It looks like it, it will be pretty, um, pretty user friendly, but it does have a good bit of detail and I do have some lace and, you know, frilly, floofy, ruffly bits that are going to be put on here for some embellishment as would have been appropriate. We're going to make the variation number four that is more for the late 1890s. Um, I have a black broadcloth, which in case you can't tell is one of my favorite cloths. It's pretty cheap, pretty, you know, user friendly and flexible that you can do a lot of different things with it. And then I also have from the walking skirt that I made, I have a good bit of a black taffeta satin that I think I'm going to try to incorporate that as well. And that'll add more to the, uh, visual appearance and the the fanciness of it that I'll have some of the plain, then some of the satin, then some of the lace, and just kind of pull it all together and see what we get when we're done. This pattern was one that you print at home, tape together, and then cut out your size. This was the first time that I had used this type of pattern, and I actually found it pretty easy, and I liked being able to decide on my pattern, order it, print it, and be ready to start cutting and sewing. This petticoat is assembled in several different pieces. The first thing that we have to do is sew together the parts that make the top portion of the petticoat. There are a couple of darts in here to help give it some shape. And I also decided to sew this together with French seams just to make sure that all of my seams were finished. As you can see next, I obviously still cannot figure out how French seams work consistently, so I have to rip that one out and do it again. The next part after we get the top portion together that we have to deal with is the middle portion, which has a little bit of a gather to it and also has six rows of pin tucks. Okay, everybody, I wanted to just try to show you a little bit more closely what I'm doing with the pin tucks for this petticoat. Um, now it has that we are supposed to make six rows of pin tucks and they go right here. I am making uh, view four of this, so they go the whole way around. There's four panels of this intermediate kind of size, and the pin tucks go at the bottom of these panels. And then we get, you know, the, the next ruffle and, and all that stuff. And I think I might try to add some lace here and lace there, not sure. But the pin tucks are something I've never messed with. So I wanted to try to see if I can explain those to you, how I figured out that I'm going to do them. It looks like in the instructions, they wanted us to sew all of these panels together into a giant, it would be 180 inches long hoop, basically, circle. Um, 
that seems really unmanageable to me to try to make them even. I think I understand the theory that they want them to line up, but I think this is an acceptable risk. So what I'm doing is each panel, I'm chalk marking an inch and a half. Every inch and a half here. I have two panels kind of lined up. That's why I'm doing this a little bit wonky here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my quilting ruler which I'm glad I have. I mean, you could use any kind of straight edge, use a yardstick, whatever. But I'm using my quilting ruler and I'm just connecting these lines. Once I am done drawing all of these lines, now I'm drawing this on the right side of the fabric because this is chalk, it's gonna wash out, this will be able to be washed, it will be washed. Um, because what you do is you fold it so that the wrong side is in and you're going to go through and press each line that you drew. I drew it on the right side so that I was able to see it more clearly. But I go through, iron each one, so then each piece just sort of looks like, you know, it has the lines and has the accordion fold on it. And then go over to the machine and what you do here, oh, look at that. Um, you just top stitch. So this right here, the, the chalk's already kind of worn off, um, but there was chalk on the edge here. You go through and you just stitch about half an inch. Um, I always say sort of about, I'm not perfect. I'm very shaky in my sewing sometimes, even if I use a, a a seam guard but um and I am using a walking foot on this because this is a poly satin taffeta kind of thing and it's real slippery but at any rate um you just sew and then you press them all down and then I'm going to come put my panels together so I will try to show you this a little bit more closely once I get these lines drawn but I just wanted to try to explain it as I was doing it um since this was something new for me to try what I am doing here, these are the panels that we made for that second layer of the skirt petticoat that have the pin tucks. We sewed the pin tucks in. I think I did that how I was supposed to. And now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm going to sew this all together into one large loop and I'm doing it with French seams because there are a lot of little threads and obviously this is a satin it's going to want to shred itself on us and um, so I'm just sort of lining them up and then running it through the machine I'm doing all of the pieces wrong side together that I'm gonna flip them do the right side to get the French seam and you know hopefully it works out I'm not sure if you can see real well here. I think there were some shots whenever I was sewing the pin tucks in. This is my walking foot with a guide. Um, the walking foot attaches to the uh, needle arm thing and it has feed dogs on it. So while your machine is pulling from the bottom with its feed dogs, the Foot helps pull from the top so this can be really useful it's, it's more commonly used in quilting 
and it helps if you're trying to pull multiple layers through so that you don't just have the bottom layer getting the tension this will pull from the top too but I find for myself I find it to be useful with these super slippery kind of fabrics because it kind of helps where the fabric might slip off of itself if it was just being pulled from one direction this helps it to be pulled from both and then you know it might line up a little bit better that's the goal this next part that we're going to attempt to do these are pieces for the bottom ruffle edge and there are eight of these lengths of fabric that are essentially the width of an entire piece of a 43 44 wide fabric eight of them so eight times 44 that's very long and we sew these together again in one big loop and then we're going to be assembling the body part that we made the flounce and then the ruffle but I want to put a layer of the lace that I showed you in between each of those layers and maybe at the bottom so what I'm going to end up trying to do is I'll have to try to measure what length I want so that I can trim a bit off so that when I put the lace pieces in that I haven't made it too long because I don't you know obviously I don't want my petticoat to be dragging on the floor and my skirt to be skirt length so um, it, the instructions want me had wanted me to put the flounce onto the back and, and put it on a little bit differently but frankly just like um, sometimes I end up doing we're just going to go with it and see what happens and I'm hopeful that we can get it lined up eventually with all of these massive amounts of fabric but I'm going to start sewing these all together into one giant strip and then start the ruffling and gathering and lacing part. All right, everybody, this is where we're going to end this part of the petticoat process. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel. Let me a comment about how you think things are going. In the next part, we will take the three layers that we assembled. We will put them together, add some lace, and try it on and see what we think about the final look. Thank you for joining me.